My passion for conservation started at a very early age. As a child, I witnessed the removal of an entire generation of killer whales from the Pacific Northwest, from our home in the San Juan Islands. Between 1965 when I was born and 1977, the orca hunters, as they were called, captured over 200 orca and removed 50 juveniles from that population from the waters around Washington State and British Columbia. They would pass our island home in their sea cages on their way to Seattle. It was a horrific sight, but my parents felt it was important for us children to witness and understand the significance of this tragedy. These orca were removed to theme parks all over the world. At that point, I wanted to do something to protect them in their natural habitat. My interest in remote sensing also started from a very early age. My dad was a real life rocket scientist. So I spent many evenings with him, watching the night sky, looking for solar systems, looking for planets, looking for satellites. I was always most curious about what the satellites were doing as they moved across the sky and what sorts of images they were sending back. I wanted to study the Earth from space. At the heart of it all, my parents were conservationists and they instilled in me a deep love and respect for our natural world and also an understanding of our place in the universe. And while my dad was motivated by the exploration of space, I am motivated to explore and to understand patterns within our own planet. So I'm going to talk to you today about how I have embraced new technology to help address some old conservation issues. I will show you how I have combined conservation and drones. Some of the big questions we face in conservation surround issues of scale and impacts from humans. How can we study an entire system and monitor changes? How can we study mobile wildlife in protected areas? How can we determine the extent of human impacts in a landscape? And how can we conserve or protect an area from human impacts when the very act of studying an area causes it to be disturbed? Since the 1970s, ecologists have primarily used field-based surveys to measure changes in the environment. However, field-based studies are expensive, both in resources and time, and can only measure a small part of the landscape. In addition, field studies cause impacts of their own with trampling, with the installation of equipment and gear and other intrusions. Remote sensing specialists use imagery from satellites or airplanes to study landscape scale issues. Imagery from aircraft is expensive. It's limited by weather, the availability of aircraft or pilots, and also there's a large health and safety risk at flying at low altitudes. High resolution satellite imagery is also expensive. And in places like New Zealand, where I live and work, satellite imagery is limited due to the amount of cloud cover. In Te Reo Māori, New Zealand is called Aotearoa, or land of the long white cloud. In order to address the issues surrounding cloud cover, exorbitant costs and expensive field studies, my team at Auckland University of Technology have developed new methods for surveying protected areas, which allows us to measure an entire system up to hundreds of kilometers, while leaving no footprints. Our methods are affordable, repeatable, and have actually revolutionized the way I do science. So now I'm gonna talk about drones. Drones have a bad reputation, mainly because of their military use. But our drones are only armed with expensive cameras. We have developed a process of collecting images by drones and stitching those images together to create high resolution maps. It's worked so well that we now own a small swarm of drones. We have the helicopter style drone, often used recreationally. They cost around $2,000, but we arm them with very expensive cameras, mainly for vegetation monitoring. Some of our aircraft are waterproof so that we can fly safely over open water. We use these ones for monitoring whales and turtles and seabirds to understand their behavior and to do population counts at given sites. For our longer range and larger area applications, we fly fixed wing aircraft. We have two three meter wingspan aircraft that can fly for about an hour or 23 kilometers. This allows us to mow the lawn, so to speak, and collect thousands of images over an area. Our drones, armed with their expensive cameras, are recording in detail the health of things like wetlands, offshore islands, 
seabird and turtle habitats, Antarctic ecosystems, Namibian desert systems, wildlife behavior and movement, and even geothermal hotspots. What we are doing is brand new, and New Zealand is leading the way globally in drone research. We've also been working with a company in Switzerland, developing 3D mosaics of the landscapes that we've been filming. So we can create whole landscape maps that show incredible detail, like the number of trees, the size of trees. We can even 3D print the trees. I have also just led an expedition to Antarctica to trial this method of using drones to map Antarctic specially protected areas. It was a huge success, and I'd like to share some of the highlights of that work with you now. For your background, the threats from climate change to terrestrial, coastal, and marine habitats is increasing globally and is particularly pronounced in the polar regions. These threats are potentially made worse by the increase in human activity. Antarctic soils, which are exposed to humans during the summer months, are some of the most vulnerable habitats on the planet. Human impacts are mainly found in areas where scientific activities are conducted and where tourism activities are undertaken. The growth of science activities and tourism in the Ross Sea region of Antarctica has led to an increasing concern regarding the potential effects of human activities on those vulnerable ecosystems. There are limited resources, however, for monitoring the past and cumulative effects of human impacts. However, I proposed that drones might provide a solution to these resource challenges. So my team and I used our drones to map detailed information on landscapes, biodiversity, and human impacts at three Antarctic specially protected areas. We were able to map the footprint of camping sites and walking trails several years old. We also identified artifacts left at campsites, some as old as 1911. At the same time, high-resolution baseline maps of these protected areas were made using thousands of images collected from the drone sensors. We could map different mosses, lichens, and cyanobacteria, and we could potentially go back to these same sites in future years to determine if there had been any changes. The maps we created can be visualized in 3D. Imagine what it will be like to go online, to put on your Google Cardboard goggles, select your favorite protected area in Antarctica, and start walking around that landscape, but in virtual reality. You too can see inside the hut at Cape Evans. You can walk in the dry valleys. You can hop from boulder to boulder and see some of the richest biodiversity in Antarctica, all without leaving a footprint. For a scientist, the future use of drones means more and better data with less or almost no impact on the environment at a fraction of the cost. As technology improves and the planes get better, we will be able to learn even more about the environment on a massive scale. And this will help us to manage natural resources, even in areas too hazardous for humans to go. With this technology, the sky really is the limit.